Um, Mr. Chair, I first want to start with a comment. And that's where Albert started, and he said, trusting people. Now, of course, the EU made a very important, uh, I think you call it a premise, hey? And that is, should the audience trust what we say to them? <laughs> I mean, how do they recognize that we are trustworthy, hey? Because you are so charming. And is it because you're charming or whatever? It is a challenge. Um, in my own work with organisations, I particularly have come across these situations. Some of the evidence is, is research-based, others anecdotal. I think the important thing for us is to be able to say in a very short term, how do we, can we profile such a person? Albert has given us a very detailed one. For me, it's essentially the the self-serving individual that's completely self-serving will use any means in order to attain personal goals and objectives to their own ends. In other words, uni the universe turn ar turns around them. Now, in the olden days, we had check and b checks and balances in organisations for that. Organisations were more stable. Maybe the, the rules were clearer. Nowadays, organisations are more fluid. Uh, ethics, there's some grey areas that become increasingly grey if you talk about the new world of work. So these people then have kind of ample opportunity to flourish. And I see in the past maybe we could have kept that under control, but maybe of course if the person is very senior in the organisation, then they've got the authority to go that route and, and start to turn their organisation with all its resources to serve their own ends. I mean, the emphasis towards the end of your talk was as well, how do we identify these people, in particular if we're in the recruitment process. For me, an interesting angle here, apart from psychometric testing, is to present this person uh, with a couple of samples of typical situations in organisations where you create a dilemma where the person has to make a choice and if you construct it in such a way that what you can detect from that, who are they choosing to serve here in terms of resolving the lemma? Is it about their own agenda? Is what they get out of it? Or are they able to move beyond themselves even, and that's quite important if you can structure that work sample situation so that the decision they have to take implies a personal sacrifice may even say, I have to make this tough decision, if you present a person with a situation, such that from that I may even get demoted. So presenting that, because we know, uh, and some evidence indicates that psychopaths are clever enough to manipulate also the psychological tests that they are presented with. But if you can pose such tricky situations, where there are, it's either this or that, a situation or choice rather and how the person chooses and what is coming through in the terms of the type of behavior. Of course what is an interesting angle as well which I could add and then I've done with the chair is to what extent do followers, subordinates in organization like psychopaths like to be abused, manipulated and maybe you're getting them into this circular process where the psychopaths actually flourishes because the subordinates like what is being done to them. It's a bit of the family wife, uh, husband situation of the abused wife or the abused husband also nowadays. Both parties could be abused. And they like, they like to be bullied for example, they like to be manipulated. And over time you get the self-reinforcing circle. So a couple of thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Chair.